Hey there, Julian from Emberstack here, and welcome to episode four of our social media series. And in this one, what we're going to do is user-generated content. So we're going to allow our users to create posts. And we've already set up the public member profiles, and if you don't know how to do that, I will leave a link to that video in the description. So here we are, and we've created this in Webflow. So I have this working, and I'm going to show you right now what the end result is. So let's go ahead and click choose file to upload an image and then say here what a beautiful red Ferrari and then we're gonna hit create post and we can see that this little thing pops up saying that the post is gonna go live because it takes a little bit of time to load and everything to create um, so you want to tell them that and then here we are, and this is a post. This is not client-side generated, just stuff that they inputted. This is a Webflow CMS item with its own unique URL. And now we can see as well, if I go back here into the feed, that it's going to show up here, everything in chronological order. So with that being said, let's take a look at how to allow your members to create user-generated content in Webflow, or in this case, in this they're creating a post doesn't matter let's go so anyways what we've got is of course webflow and we have this new post page and this is simply a form now this form has the attribute ms-code-file-upload equals form because for the file uploads we are using the member script 38 to allow this to happen and the good thing about this is that you don't need a business plan to make this happen now i'm sure if you do already have a business plan then you can kind of skip this and use the native Webflow file upload, but I'm not sure. In this case, we're using the member script and I'm sure a lot of you are going to want to do the same. So we have that and that is what's making it happen. And then we just have a div in here with the attribute ms-code-file-upload-input, a mouthful I know. And then the value is file to upload and this is where that uploader appears as we saw. Then we also have a caption in here, which, you know, you can make whatever fields you want to make, whatever makes the most sense for you. But in this case, it's caption. And then we also have a hidden field, as you can see, with the attribute data MS member ID. And this is what is allowing us to actually link it to the member. So when this form is submitted, as we can see here, there is an action URL, and this is a make webhook. So now I'm going to show you how it looks within make. And just while we're here in Webflow, what I'm going to mention is you're going to put this URL in and you're going to set the form to post. If you don't do that, it won't work. So now let's go into make and see what we have. So here we are. And the first step of our scenario is a custom webhook. And custom webhooks are super versatile. I use them for a lot. And you would definitely see that if you watch a lot of our videos. So what we've done here is we've created a new custom webhook. Just click add. And then it's going to show you this stuff here. Then what I like to do after I put this in and put it in the form is hit run once on the scenario when you just have this one here. Then submit the form and it's going to allow the data to flow through nicely and make your experience in building the scenario a lot easier. Then the next thing we have is Google Drive upload a file and you might be wondering why do we have that and the reason is because Webflow needs a URL for the image in order to upload it. But we don't have a URL. We need to take the literal image data, the like binary code, mime type, whatever it's called, and turn it into a file. So what we've done here is we've connected our Google account, entered a folder ID, and you get that by going and creating a folder in Google Drive, and then you go to the URL. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and paste the URL in here so you can actually see it. And after folder slash, everything after there, this is our ID. That is how you get that ID. So back into make, we put that there. And then here you can see file upload name and data. So that is what we're using. So this is going to upload the file to Google Drive. The next thing that we need to do is get a member. So what you can see here is this, we've connected our member stack app, and we just want to get this member. The reason for that is because we're using their CMS ID custom field to figure out who it is that actually posted this. So then we have these two tools things and these are setting variables. So the reason for that, well, there's two, two reasons for that. First one here is this. 
Google Drive is a bit weird and they don't actually give you a useful publicly accessible link. So we're doing this little replace thing here and manipulating the thumbnail link so it's actually gonna give us the full size image URL, which is pretty cool. Um, so we've got this step and that's gonna give us the URL that we can use to pass into Webflow. Then the next thing we have is just generating any random number as you can see here. And that's what we're using for the post slug. That way we don't run into any issues where someone, let's say names their post like hat, but someone else has already named their post hat. So then we have to create an item. And you may be familiar with the frustration of these three steps. Right now with the Webflow API, you need to publish an item. There's an additional step for that. Um, but anyways, first things first, we've connected our Webflow account and we've just mapped everything up here. So post slug, this is that one, that random number that we're generating. Then user here, we are actually getting the fourth step here, or number four, it's not the fourth step, and getting the custom field CMS ID from that member. Then we're using that image URL that we generated in this step. We're mapping the caption and we're mapping the slug. This other stuff is left blank. Then we have another step to update the same item. So we've mapped the ID as you can see here and we've just given it the same name because you need to fill in name and then we're adding the CMS ID. Now the reason we're doing this is because it allows you to then manipulate the item in the future. So let's say we want to add a delete functionality, which we do, which we will, then you need to have this CMS ID in here. The other stuff you can leave blank, all you want to do is update that. Then we just have a simple publish an item module. And finally, at the end, we have this webhook response right here where what we're doing is setting it to 302, adding a custom header with the key location. Then we're dynamically creating this URL of the new post that we've just created, and we're gonna redirect the user to that. So that is absolutely it. And then at the end, you're gonna to wanna to hit save and make sure it's turned on, and you will then have it working. So. I'm gonna actually upload the blueprint for this make scenario in the description here of the YouTube video. So if you want that, you can simply create a new scenario, click more, click import blueprint, and then grab that JSON file, which you're gonna be able to download. So that is it, I hope this helped. I will see you in the next video in this series.